Well, they improved it tremendously. The late 60s and 70s were, in the U.S., a period of rising inflation, or rising unemployment. The policies were very interventionist in both monetary policy and fiscal policy. And those changed uh, by the 1980s, became more focused on price stability with respect to monetary policy. And fiscal policy moved away from the, these Keynesian stimulus packages towards more just reducing the tax rates, tax reform types of policies. And the performance just was remarkably different. Economists call it the great moderation period. The UK, I think, very similar. Performance in the 70s was just getting out of hand. Uh, people were fed up, had a change of government, and the policy in the 80s changed in much the same way, monetary policy in particular, and the, the economy performed much better. Well, I think you look at the infrequency of recessions. We had just two mild recessions in the U.S. in, these, in this period of time. And in the 70s, there were, there were many. Inflation came down during this period of time. Unemployment came down during this period of time instead of going up in the 1970s. Well, I think that's one way to describe the improvement. In the 70s, if you look back before the Taylor Rule existed and compare to what that policy would suggest, it was quite erratic. Um, unrule-like, unpredictable. Interest rates were, were generally too low, but then they rose to be too high. And later on, in the basically the 80s and 90s, policy was described much better according to that kind of a policy rule. And it's not just that rule, the way to think about it, it's just more stable kind of policy that didn't try to do too many things, tried to get the inflation rate down, focus on price stability. But it did really match the reactions of a policy rule like that quite well. It's a, it was a surprise if to me and many other people, I think, about how when you saw policy being closer to that kind of a formula or policy rule, policy worked better. And I think that's an important lesson because in recent years, when central banks have deviated from that kind of policy, things haven't worked out so well. Well, monetary policy around 2003, 4, and 5 really deviated from what worked in the 80s and 90s. In, in the U.S., interest rates got very low, I would say too low for too long. It, it accentuated the housing boom, and search for yield. People tried to take on uh, risky assets because those other rates were so low. I think all the accumulation of risks and, and bad assets finally became apparent when the crisis Began. So I think monetary policy is a, a significant factor. Other, other things too, regulatory policy kind of got off track as well, but I think that's the main thing. If you look at the UK, you see similar things. Rates were not so low, but people who studied whether monetary policy could have been a factor in that housing boom was pretty clear. And then you look at other countries, the countries in, in, in Europe at that time, countries like Ireland and Greece and Spain all had rates which were too low for their conditions, and they're the ones which had really these speculative booms more than others. So there's a lot of evidence for this being a factor in the crisis, and I think as people look at it uh, more and more, they're becoming convinced that that's the case. And again, it was, a, it was a big change from things that worked really well in the 80s and 90s. Well, it was most, most severe, uh, probably of all the post-World War II recessions. Um, the only one that's comparable in size in the U.S. was the early 80s, where we had back-to-back -back recessions, and it's comparable in some ways. What is so different is the recoveries from those uh, much more rapid growth after the early 1980s recession than this most recent recession. But both were severe. Um, and I think that's true of a lot of countries at this point. And the, and the financial crisis, of course, had much to do with that severity. I think the main thing is they prevented a kind of recovery like we've seen in the past. Again, that downturn, as I have argued, has come because of the excesses to, to a great degree. There's those low interest rates going into this crisis is the extra speculation that that caused, the search for yield, and then the crash. That was severe. 
Um, and I think actually just as a side, the actions of monetary policy during that panic were lender of last resort and for the most part appropriate, just what you'd expect the central bank to do. But after that crash, after that panic, after the recession had really ended, after the down had ended, then the recovery was very disappointing. And I think that I can point to these uh, kind of return to interventionist policies, return to Keynesian type policies, both with respect to fiscal policy and monetary policy. And why I say a return back to the kind of things that were done in the 1970s. And I think that uncertainty, these actions, these temporary changes were one of the factors in this slow recovery. Well, with monetary policy, they should get back to the kind of rules-based policy that worked so well in the 80s and 90s and until recently. The world is different, but uh, there's a lot of evidence that a more systematic response of the policy instruments, the interest rate or the money supply, whatever you are thinking about, works better and not the very interventionist policies that we've seen recently. So to me, it's clear. I think it's becoming clear to other people. If you think about different people at the different central banks, you'll see more and more talk about we need to get back to this. Not a, a lot of them are not so happy with the kind of policies they're doing, but we'll see. I think that would be the best thing to do, and I say as, as soon as possible. Fiscal policy, there's a similar sense of trying to get back to a steady policy of balancing the budget, at least bringing out a policy that balances the budget, one that keeps the debt from exploding, hopes, it, hopes to keep the debt at a reasonable level to GDP. And, and again, not a lot of these temporary programs, which may even have a little effect in the short run. I have doubts about that in my studies from the U.S., but eventually they end and they don't really lead to a sustained kind of recovery. And they cause uncertainty as well. So I think the more that we move to kind of a steady-as-you-go fiscal policy, good budget order, budgets proposed and passed in a systematic way, the better off we'll be. Yeah, I think so. Uh, certainly a lot more regulation has occurred. And I would say this is something that began before the crisis. If you look, for example, at the number of people involved in regulation in the, at the federal level, you see it started to increase uh, in, 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 the, in the years that began before the crisis and it's continued to increase. It, and that's much unlike the 80s where we had that very rapid recovery from the deep recession. And if you look at particular laws, the Financial Reform Act, Dodd-Frank in the U.S. is a lot more interventionist. Some of the parts of that law have almost nothing to do with the financial crisis. And then we are sort of have a major change in the health care system. And that's, that's, a, that's a lot of mandates, a lot of regulations. And many of these have caused, I would say, deviations from the rule of law because it gets to a situation where you're going to give special exemptions or special delays for political reasons, and so people aren't treated equally. And, and, and that also occurs when you have the bailouts during the financial crisis, at least as implemented. Some firms got funds, others did not get funds. And that's also actually by definition a, a, a violation of the rule of law. People can always say, well, we had to do it, but it is a violation and, and that has persistent effects into the future. Well, Hayek wrote a lot about the importance of the rule of law and predictable policy. Those are things that I think have not given enough emphasis in, in when we teach economics, when we teach about markets and how they work. We don't focus on it enough. And I think what we've learned from the history and from Hayek is they mean a tremendous amount. And the more people understand that, it, it's an abstract for many people. Why, why is the rule of law so important for an economy? But when you, when you see its importance and understand, I think reading Hayek helps a lot, you can see that we really screwed up when we, deviate, when we deviated from the rule of law.